Welcome to the Gazelle School of Business class on creating estimates that sell. This is one of many free resources we offer to the piano service industry that covers every topic you can imagine related to building and running a profitable piano service business. So let's dive in. You shouldn't have to feel like a pushy salesperson to get your customers to invest in their piano. I'm George, and today I'm here with Timothy Barnes, a registered piano technician and the co-founder of Gazelle. Timothy is an experienced piano technician who has created millions of dollars worth of estimates using the principles we're going to teach you today. Now, creating estimates that sell and seeing customers invest in their piano is easy if you, one, consider your presentation, two, create estimates in Gazelle that are built to sell, and three, take the checks to the bank. All right, let's start by talking about step one, consider your presentation. Hey, George, I'm glad to be here. Most customers don't understand when you talk about their piano, which is why your presentation matters. So let's talk about the reason most customers don't buy and what you might be doing to cause this to happen. It's called the curse of knowledge, and you are likely suffering from a bad case of it. Don Miller in his book, Building a Story Brand, actually makes the case that you are probably suffering from this worse than you think. In fact, the more you excel in your trade and the more you understand about pianos, the longer you've been doing the work, the worse it gets. The reason is simple. You understand pianos at a level 10. Your customers don't. So when you try to explain anything to your customer about their piano, you instinctively try to simplify things down to a level five or six, but this isn't enough. Your customers are going to make a decision to invest or not invest in their piano on a level one or two. Your depth of knowledge and experience is working against you every time you talk on a level three, four, five, or six. This is what Don Miller calls the curse of knowledge. And you are talking over your customers' heads. So what do you do about this? Well, you have to identify the problem you're trying to solve and speak in pictures. So think about it. Humans think in pictures, but we communicate in words. And if you use words without also painting a clear visual image for the customer to see, then you're relying on your customer's brain to take your words and paint its own picture. So here's a better way to educate your customers. Jane, your piano was built for this level of performance. For instance, let's pretend this is a Steinway B or a Yamaha C7 or any other piano that was engineered to this standard. And it's currently performing here on an intermediate student's level. Now, the moment you introduce this problem, your customer's limbic system in their brain will light up and go to work because the limbic system is responsible for motivation, emotion, and learning. And before you can get anyone to act, they have to be motivated and emotionally want to solve the problem called there's a gap between their potential and their current state. The human brain loves trying to solve this problem. So right now, their limbic brain is stimulated and needs you to answer three very specific questions in the following order. First, how will I benefit? So tell them, I recommend this level of service because it meets all of your needs. Now, you have to actually know what their needs are and have had a conversation with them prior to this, but I recommend this level of service because it meets all of your needs. So start off by recommending a specific level of service, that is the key, that is tied specifically to how they plan to use their piano. So you identified a problem, you've shown them with words and pictures exactly how they will benefit, but their limbic brain still needs two more pieces of information before it can move forward. So next you say, now we could do this other level of service, but I don't recommend that because it isn't going to meet all your needs. And we recommend saying this in this order because it'll answer the very question their brain is asking, which is, what happens if I do nothing? In which case, their limbic brain will conclude, well, doing nothing is less than option one. So check if option one isn't enough to meet my needs, then doing nothing isn't going to meet my needs. 
Now, they will not be saying any of this out loud. They will just be standing there, nodding their head as they think about everything you are saying. So now it is time to conclude your very short presentation and continue by saying, or conditionally, if you plan to use your piano more, I would recommend this level of service. All I need to know is what level of service or what level of performance you want to aim for with your piano. And now be quiet because your customer is now asking themselves, will this be enough? And at this specific moment, their brain needs to be able to decide, yes, something near option two or three will be enough for me, depending on whether I, the customer, want to focus on my current or future needs. Presenting estimates in this way helps your customer's brain frame this decision so it can say, okay, I know what I need today. Right now, I want to aim for this level of service for my piano. And remember, your customer is thinking this in their head and isn't saying anything out loud. Your only job right now is to shut up and only answer the questions your customer verbalizes. And they're gonna ask some great questions as soon as their limbic brain gives the all clear to move forward. But before it can move forward with the decision, the limbic system needs help from the cerebral cortex. So before asking any questions, it forwards this decision to this area of the brain, which is responsible for logic and reasoning. Now, all the limbic system did was tell the cerebral cortex, hey, this is the problem. This is how I'll benefit if we solve the problem. Seems like a good idea. I want to do this. I believe it's important. I found good answers to my questions. I'm ready to act. Now, the logic center unpacks this information and quickly realizes, wait a minute, we don't have any pricing information, which is why your customer is about to verbalize their first question in three, two, one. Wait, the amygdala located near the bottom of the brain wakes up and says, hold up. I do not know what the two of you are thinking up there, but I need to ask a really important question. Do you trust this person? Now, you probably thought the first question they were going to ask was going to be about price. Nope. The price question, how much does this level of service cost? is the first question they will verbalize to you. But asking about price is a form of commitment, which is a form of danger. And this is where they take everything they know about you and in a split second, quickly look you in the eye and quietly ask themselves, do you look trustworthy? And they will unconsciously make eye contact for just a fraction of a second, and so long as there are no red flags, the pricing question that was hijacked a moment ago is now free to continue to its destination. Which means the words are about to start rolling off their tongue. So how much do these recommendations cost? Now let's pause here. When they ask this question, it sounds like their mind isn't made up yet. And one part of the brain said, yes, let's do this. I want to do this. But the logic part of the brain is slowing things down and doing its job to consider logically the best course of action. So when your customer verbalizes the question, how much is this going to cost? Just be matter of fact and tell them the total price for each option and then let their brain get back to work. Because with this pricing information, the logic part of the brain is going to very quickly revalidate their previous decision using this new information. And this is why it's so important to give them recommended, not recommended, and conditionally recommended options. Their brain needs to be able to go back to option one and ask, does knowing the price change my decision about option one? And their brain will reply, no, having the price doesn't change this decision. These services are still less than I need. So next it's going to ask, well, does knowing the price change my decision about option number three? And the brain will reply, no, he told me this level is more than I need right now. It's an option if I want it, but knowing the price of everything doesn't change this decision because option three is still more than I need. So check. Back to option two. Okay, this logically is the option that meets my needs. So let me reconsider this one 
last time. Okay, yes, limbic system, I agree. Option number two is logically the best option for us to pursue. Let's do this. Now, the amygdala doesn't really care anymore. It did its job. It'll turn back on if it perceives another threat. But finally, the limbic system and the frontal lobe are free to work together to tie off a few loose ends, starting with the fact that the customer has not yet verbally told you that they want to do the work. Think about that. To you, it looks like they're still chewing on the price you quoted. But no, the decision's already been made. And while the work of selling is done, the negotiation phase is just beginning. And George, this is where it's so important to just be quiet and not say anything because so many people say the price for the service and then feel the need to then give a dissertation about why this is important. Just tell them the price, let them make a decision, wait for them to verbalize questions. And now step one in your negotiation, only respond to questions your customer verbalizes. Their brain is not done. So just be quiet and let it have some additional space. Because if you don't say anything, your customer's frontal lobe is about to discover three additional logistical problems that are not really problems, but they do need to be addressed before they can verbally commit to scheduling the work. Starting with a question that they are going to ask themselves, do I have enough money? Now, it might seem a little weird that the brain already decided to do the work before asking this question. But if you think about it, how things work in the real world, this happens to you all the time, right? The emotion and motivation center in your brain just got ahead of the logical reasoning, and now the frontal lobe is playing catch up. So problem number one, if your customer does not have the money easily available, they will say something like, um, what would it cost to get the performance up to somewhere, say, in this range? And does all this work have to be done at the same time? Notice, they are not asking for a discount. And they are not saying that they don't want to do all the work you recommended. They're just saying, can you lower the scope of the project to meet the amount of money I know I have access to today? When they ask this, simply say, yeah, we can do that for this price. That is, assuming it is possible and you are confident of what it will take to get it to that level of performance, the key here is to be confident and avoid the curse of knowledge. All they asked was for a price, so do not give them a dissertation about the inner workings of the piano. Just say, sure. I can get there for this price. As soon as the customer identifies an option within their budget, the frontal lobe resolves this problem and moves immediately on to the next question. Do I have the authority to write the check and schedule the work? If they're the decision maker, this will not be a problem. They'll cut the check and schedule the work. But if they are not the decision maker, they'll ask if you can give them a copy of your estimate so they can share it with a spouse or a trustee or whoever holds the purse strings, which is why Gazelle makes it easy to send your customer a copy of your detailed estimate with everything laid out the way you presented it to them. Now, once the frontal lobe resolves its authority question, it moves on to the final question. And this one's easy. How long will this take? If they ask this question, congratulations, you're going to take a check to the bank. All they're trying to figure out are the scheduling logistics before verbally committing to the work. Now you're both free to relax and enjoy the process of improving their piano. This works because people understand story and you avoided the curse of knowledge because you spoke on a level they could understand. If your current process for presenting services is so complex that you need a car or sports analogy to explain your dissertation about the inner workings of their piano, you are suffering from the curse of knowledge. No part of presenting services this way requires you to talk about anything except how this level of service will improve their piano in this way and the value they will receive if they do that. Which brings us to step two. 
easily create estimates in Gazelle. Let's move on and show you how Gazelle helps you customize your own estimates on the fly while standing in front of your customer's living room. Because nobody needs to waste time prospecting for work. If you are going to create estimates for your customers, then it needs to be easy to do because nobody wants to get home after a long day and still have this chore hanging over their head. Now, Gazelle makes this easy for you uh, by allowing you to build checklists for common situations you might encounter. For instance, you can create a checklist for in-home services versus larger rebuilding or shop jobs or grand pianos, upright pianos, or spinets. This allows you to quickly check off everything you recommend to get this piano up to its full potential. From there, it is really easy to customize various options by adding tiers of service for each piano. This helps you offer an accurate price based off of the specific services recommended for each of your estimate options. And every estimate option you create in Gazelle gets its own recommendation, which is how we customize the examples from earlier with green for recommended options, red for not recommended options, and yellow for conditionally recommended options. Now, next, Gazelle displays all this to the customer on a condition report at the top of the estimate. This gives your client the visual image showing how each level of service is going to improve their piano. And this approach can easily, easily be adapted for a spinet piano that is in disrepair, a semi-concert grand that needs a rebuild, or an old upright or middle of the road piano that technically can be improved but should be replaced, right? you can adapt this to any piano in any condition. And with Gazelle, it is easy to snap pictures of your customer's piano and immediately add them to your estimate. This way, your customer is seeing detailed pictures of their piano in your estimate. Additionally, you get access to Gazelle's service library, which is a professionally written list with hundreds of service descriptions that cover what this item is, why it's important, and what the risk of not addressing this item is. Now, this description appears alongside each of the items in your estimate, so your customer can understand why the services you're recommending are important. Now, you can edit these if you want, but we hired a professional writer to take industry jargon and put it into plain English. All of these service descriptions are written so that you can avoid the curse of knowledge. And lastly, Gazelle makes it really easy for customers to book now, as soon as they decide to do a certain level of work. For smaller on-site jobs, you have the option of letting customers self-schedule all of the services. However, for larger jobs, Gazelle makes it easy for the customer to just contact you to get this job scheduled. Sending estimates from Gazelle makes it easy to grow your revenue. We have years of data showing that on average, technicians using Gazelle's estimates are bringing thousands of dollars of new revenue each month into their business. Additionally, every year, piano technicians around the globe are quoting tens of millions of dollars worth of estimates in Gazelle and using these to rapidly fill their shops and grow their business. What would you do if you had an additional 20, 30, or $50,000 in annual revenue per technician? Which brings us to step three, take the checks to the bank and ask yourself a really important question. Do I want to double or triple revenue? Now we can laugh about this, but the reality is gazelle estimates grow bit revenue. How much revenue you do in your business is a personal choice, but you can double revenue from where you are today just by improving this one part of your business. Now, if you're going to grow revenue this much, you're going to need new systems. So let's wrap up by talking about improving the different systems in your business to help facilitate and manage this increasing revenue. The first thing you need to do is polish your presentation. This takes practice. You have to take the time to find your voice. So don't go to your big sell first. Practice on everyday customers, spinets, uprights, and whatever piano is in front of you. Then when you are comfortable, reach out to that one customer who you know can afford to do the work. Next, evaluate your skills. You can't sell what you can't provide. 
So increase your product offerings by learning new skills or partnering with other technicians so you can offer a more complete set of services. Your time management is another system you will need to improve. And Gazelle is really good at helping you save time and wow your customers. So you have the time you need to focus on doing all the repairs and shop work that you're going to sell. And choose to be profitable. Profit is a choice, not an accident. Now, fortunately, we recorded an entire video on building a profitable piano service business. It's free to watch on our Gazelle School of Business website. And it is probably time to hire an accountant or bookkeeper, especially if you find yourself stressed out at the end of every month managing your growing business. Lastly, create better payment policies. The first few times you sell a large job, it'll be a lot of fun. Enjoy this moment. You've earned it. But when you suddenly start selling bigger jobs, you'll quickly realize you're taking on bigger risks if you allow your customer to pay you after you've done the work. This is a problem that now needs to be solved. So start a payment policy that says pay first, then get service. For smaller jobs, less than $1,000 or five times your service call fee, require upfront payment to schedule the work. And if the work is scheduled, you know, really far into the future, then send out your invoices 30 days in advance and cancel the appointment if you do not receive the payment by the due date on the invoice. For medium jobs of $1,000 to $5,000, offer to let your customer pay in full today for a 5% discount. Otherwise, require a $1,000 deposit and send your invoice for the balance 30 days in advance of the appointment and cancel the appointment if you don't receive the payment by the due date on the invoice. For larger jobs greater than $5,000, Require a $1,000 deposit to hold the job on your schedule, 50% to get the job started, and 50% within 30 days of completion. At no point should you be wondering, gee, I did all this work. I sure hope I'm going to get paid. Because you deserve to get paid faster. As you get busier, you can start requiring payment further and further in advance. Imagine how it would feel to have all of your jobs for the next 30 days already paid in full, and anyone calling for a last minute appointment is going to pay you upfront for their appointment. That is a totally different business than you are probably running today. And if you don't think it's possible, Gazelle's estimates can help you get there. Lastly, let's talk about contracts. For all jobs over $1,000, require a signed contract that stipulates your terms using an online document signing tool. Also, if you don't want to go through that hassle, well, then consider this. The simplest form of a contract is a paid invoice with a return policy. If they send you a check, they've agreed to your terms, and they can get a refund according to your policy. Also, as your revenue grows, watch our video on tripling your revenue. The tools we give in that video will help you better manage your growing business and sail past common stage change challenges. Because at the end of the day, your business's goal here is to find better customers who choose to invest in their piano at a higher level. You get here by making it easy for them to understand exactly how solving problems and choosing this level of service is going to benefit them in a tangible way. So send an estimate to your next customer. The only thing between you and selling more services is a simple decision to create your first estimate in Gazelle and offer to improve your customer's piano. If you don't, your customers will never choose to invest in their piano. You'll feel constantly defeated. Every day you'll leave pianos in a state you're not proud of and you'll leave each appointment knowing you're leaving tons of revenue on the table. But you don't have to continue in this cycle. Instead, build the business of your dreams, increase sales, grow revenue, and create a steady cash flow of profitable jobs in your business, all while avoiding the nagging feeling that your only choice is to become a pushy salesperson. It's not. You can go from someone who sells an occasional $700 repair to a premier technician in your area, regularly closing $1,000, $5,000, even larger jobs, and getting paid 30 days in advance. 
Gazelle School of Business is a free resource that covers every topic you can imagine related to building and running a piano service business. Now, here at Gazelle, we focus on technicians that are frustrated by inefficient scheduling of appointments, struggling to keep up with sending out estimates and invoices on time, and lacking enough monthly revenue to consistently be profitable. And the team at Gazelle is excited to help you find the tools you need to save your time and wow your customers so you can focus on growing your business and doing what you enjoy most.